My name is Dave Hodson. I'm a senior scientist with CIMIT, the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. My job is to coordinate the global wheat rust monitoring system. These, these diseases, their capacity to, to devastate crops on, on vast scales within a very rapid time scale, it's, it's almost equi an equivalent to a forest fire, that, that once the, the fire becomes established, then it's, it's very difficult to, to control. Once they start, they're very difficult to, to stop. In 2013-14, the variety Digaloo became totally susceptible to a new race that appeared here in, in Ethiopia. The epidemic that resulted was localized to southeast Ethiopia, but it, it, it was devastating. To walk through farmers' fields that had been totally destroyed by stem rust was a very um, heartbreaking experience. <laughs>Many farmers who grow digaloo have not seen the, the stem rust disease. They know this variety to be very resistant against yellow rust and also to other stem rust races. So we're facing a situation where we have vast areas planted to a, an extremely susceptible variety. We have a highly virulent race of stem rust that, that will be present and if the environmental conditions are, are suitable in terms of moisture and temperature and we see early infections of, of stem rust on farmers fields then we can be looking at a national scale stem rust epidemic. Makanki ya makida Muhammad, itu iya rat ufe. Ana munesa ganda hulu kocha kaso. Ejo le shanka ba. Kano jatu kamadi hing ota, bokolo hing ota, bakele hing ota. Ama do garu garu na mami akawani hira toko ta eh garu na mihing umaje chupa. Okan umaje chupi kana. Ama baru matok kocha do mina nurra ba de. Baru matok kocha do mina nurra ba de. Paka, kalas. Mantu tak kunci. Itu apa yang tu mubit cak? We're putting together a series of of radio messages to raise the awareness level amongst farmers, to inform them that digaloo is now highly susceptible to make them aware of the disease symptoms that they need to, to look out for in their fields and also to inform them about the control measures that they can use. There are intensive efforts from the breeding side to develop new resistant varieties. There are also extensive surveillance activities undergoing and also efforts for seed dissemination. We've seen world-class screening facilities developed in Kenya and also here in Ethiopia. Tens of thousands of, of lines have been screened each year at these, these facilities. So these have all contributed to providing extremely reliable platforms for generating data for researchers all around the world. All the evidence that we have indicates that without sustained long-term long efforts, then you're gonna be in a continual situation of reacting to yet another rust crisis somewhere around the, the globe. If complacency sets in, we would have to rebuild the, the entire system from scratch when the next major
crisis occurs. And almost certainly there will be another major rust crisis. And we really have to have the capacity in place, the, the networks, the technologies, to be able to combat and prevent those, those crises. Dr. Borlaug, his, his famous statement was, rust never sleeps. And this, this is what we see, that it's, it's a continual changing, um, emerging threat. And as a result, we, we need the preventative medicine approach applied to these, these major crop diseases. If we can succeed in preventing the threat of wheat, wheat rusts, then we stand to gain major social and also economic benefits. Last season, our ability to, to combat yellow rust and also some of the stem rust races resulted in a record wheat harvest for farmers here in Ethiopia. Also, again, Ethiopia over the last five years, five to ten years, we've, we've seen a, a, a doubling of, of wheat production in the country. And rust-resistant varieties have played a major role in contributing to this, to this great success.